Good morning. Before I head out to the facility today, I wanted to talk about the 49ers defensive line and the article that I just put out on The Athletic. It's um, unbelievable how far Chris Kacarek has taken this unit, and it's so important for the 49ers right now because they're about to face one of the best pass-blocking offensive lines in football with their season on the line. But remember back to the start of the year where when Nick Bosa was the only one doing anything on the 49ers defensive line and everybody was pining for DeForest Buckner, the 49ers traded before that 2020 season when the 49ers only real hopes of fielding a dominant defensive line seemed to ride on the very tenuous condition of D Ford's back. It was Bosa and everybody else. And that meant no pass rush whenever Bosa was chip blocked or double team like that game against the green Bay Packers. And it really didn't look good for the 49ers. They had a below average defense. They weren't getting that push up front and their cornerbacks because that cornerback position is such a big problem and such a glaring issue. Uh, it, it was getting exposed because the pass rush wasn't getting home in time. Well, fast forward to now. We're entering week 18, final game of this extended regular season, and the 49ers are playing dominant ball up front. And that's going to have to continue if this team is going to, A, make the playoffs, and B, even if they do make the playoffs, if they're going to advance well into January and potentially into February. This is a rush over coverage football team. And that's what I wrote about today in The Athletic. I'm going to put the link right now in the comments section for all you guys to be able to take a look at it. And it just behold some of these numbers that uh, I dug up. First of all, we have to start with the run defense because you earn the right to rush the passer. You have to get opposing teams into you know unfavorable down and distant situations. That only is going to happen if you're able to stop the run on early downs. Well, the 49ers weren't stopping the run on early downs in weeks one to five at an efficient enough clip. But since their bye week, which happened in week six, look at run defense in the NFL. 49ers have the most efficient run defense in the NFL since their bye week. Ahead of the Saints, the Panthers, the Rams, who they face on Sunday, and the Seahawks. That's rush EPA added per game on run defense. 49ers adding nearly a touchdown of value through their run defense per game. Now they're doing it even though they're giving up over four yards per carry. So how is that possible, you might ask? Well, it's possible because the 49ers have an efficient run defense. They have made the right stops at the right times ahead of the line to gain to be able to earn the right to rush the passer to get that uh, pass rushing NASCAR package, lighter defensive ends out onto the field. You allow Arden Key to rush over tackles uh, or, or from tackle over guards if you're in the correct down and distance. You allow your defensive linemen to truly pin their ears back and tee off if you're in the correct down and distance. And with efficient stops, the 49ers have been able to do just that, to set up their pass rush. The 49ers also lead the NFL with 22 forced fumbles, including seven on run plays and their fumble recovery luck has gotten a little bit better as of late. So that's another huge component to making sure that that run defense is getting the 49ers in the correct spot. Because even if you don't recover a fumble, causing a fumble usually means that you've set up the next play to be an advantageous one in terms of down and distance. So the 49ers, number one run, run defense since week six, number two run defense overall in terms of efficiency this year, who gets the most individual credit? These two guys get the most individual credit. DJ Jones and Eric Armstead. This is ESPN's run stop win rate. How often do defensive tackles defeat their run blocks? This is an NFL ranking league wide. Well, you have the top guy, a 49er, DJ Jones. The number three guy, Eric Armstead. Two of the top three defensive tackles as far as run stopping in the NFL this year, as far as shedding run blocks are on the same team. Can't overstate how important that is. Eric Armstead didn't move inside until around week eight, week nine. The 49ers realized they had to do something because Javon Kinlaw had ACL surgery around the time. Well, he didn't play after the bye week, and he had ACL surgery around the time of week nine. It was then that it dawned upon the 49ers that it's not going to get any better on the inside. We're going to keep on getting washed out by these opposing offensive guards if we don't make a change. Remember Zach Kerr, 
49ers had him early in the season. It was actually it seemed like a sneaky good pickup, a free agent, played for the Carolina Panthers last year. Well, uh, he was a decent pass rusher, but he wasn't getting it done against the run. He was getting washed out by guards against Detroit in week one. I posted several clips in all 22 of the 49ers just not being sturdy enough up front. Even when Javon Kinlaw was in there, the 49ers were struggling because Kinlaw wasn't at 100%. Then Kinlaw got hurt, done for the season, and the 49ers definitely weren't at 100%. DJ Jones played good football throughout for the 49ers in 2021, but they needed a second guy. They needed Batman and Robin there on the inside, and that's where moving Eric Armstead full-time to defensive tackle has worked wonders. So if anybody ever tells you that Armstead is overrated, Armstead's not doing what he's supposed to do, he has unlocked, together with DJ Jones, the spine of this 49ers pass rush because you have to stop the run to rush the passer. And when the 49ers have the two top NFL defensive tackles and run-stop win rate in their wide nine where all the defensive linemen are spread out, there's extra room. You've got to have athletic defensive tackles to take that extra room and make sure that it's clogged up to make sure that you're working against those double teams, beating them, fighting off those blocks, making those stops so you don't get gashed up the middle. That's what DJ Jones and Eric Armstead are doing. So that set the table for what happened next. And this is a two-part phase. Phase one was Arden Key. Arden Key did almost nothing for the Raiders in three seasons, three sacks in those three years across the Bay. He did almost nothing for the 49ers in weeks one to seven. Look at this. Arden Key, three pressures, ranked number 166 of defensive linemen, and a pressure rate ranked number 167 of defensive linemen over weeks one to seven. But after Armstead moved inside, after the 49ers fortified that run defense, they began to have more confidence in playing Arden Key on more downs. And they had began to have more confidence in playing Arden Key on the interior, because Arden Key's not a run defender. He's not part of the 49ers' rush defense plans. So if you earn the right to rush the passer and put the offense into passing situations and your own defensive line into pass rushing situations, a lighter athletic edge rusher like Arden Key can see more opportunities. Well, since week eight, that game against Chicago, look at this monumental improvement. Key has six sacks since week eight. 28 pressures, that ranks number 23, and a pressure percentage of 16.7%. He's improved from number 167 to number eight. So that was surge number one for the 49ers run defense. Then came surge number two, and that started with the game against Cincinnati. And this is the one that truly, truly matters as we analyze and handicap this upcoming game against the Rams. It's not just Ben Key who has improved for the 49ers down the stretch. Since week 14, they've had a surge across the board as far as their depth pieces outside of Nick Bosa. So Arden Key, who in weeks 1-13 to was ranked number 90 in pressure rate, has ranked number 5 since week 14. Sansom Ebucom was ranked near the bottom, number 216 of defensive linemen, has ranked number 11 in pressure rate since week 14. Jordan Willis, number 228 over the first 13 weeks, has ranked number 41, and even Kentavious Street, number 150 over the first 13 weeks, number 16. All of these guys firmly above average over the past four games. And even Charles Amenahu, who doesn't have a sack, number 40 since joining the 49ers. And since that week 14, he joined the 49ers around midseason in the trade from the Texans. This is staggering improvement across the board. In fact, the only 49ers defensive lineman who has not really improved in terms of pass rushing, uh, you know, and aux pass rushing, auxiliary weapons to Nick Bosa has been Kevin Givens, who stayed around 7%. But everybody else, including Amenahu, who doesn't have a sack, has delivered pressure. And Amenahu who has delivered game-impacting pressure. And what that has meant is that Nick Bosa, he doesn't have a sack over the past two games, but it hasn't really mattered for the 49ers. They're still generating pressure, despite the fact that Nick's, Nick Bosa is getting uh, double team, triple team. Max Protect is headed toward Nick Bosa, but the 49ers are getting pressure from elsewhere. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. That That's what can make this defensive line dominant. That's what has made it dominant. Now the secondary's got to do its job, and you know maybe they won't have Jimmy Ward. Maybe they won't have Kwan Williams. Those guys are all on the COVID list right now, so you have to hold your breath if you're a 49ers fan. 
But the only answer if those guys are out against the Rams is the defensive line in the front seven, which, by the way, is playing well at the linebacker level as uh, too. So you have to root the defense up front in that front seven. And the defensive line, as you can see here, is absolutely doing its job. They're coming at more spots than one. You know, they're coming from more spots than just Nick Bosa's spot. And that's everything for this 49ers defensive line. So tip your cap to Chris Kacarek. This chart right in front of you is 49ers defensive line coach Chris Kacarek. We'll call, call him the fighting Chris Kacarek. They have absolutely rounded into form heading into week 18. And you know why that's extra important? The Rams are number one in the NFL in pass block win rate. This is the best offensive line as far as pass blocking goes according to that metric. So the 49ers are going to have to show up and play. All right, guys, that's it. Defensive line, Chris Kacarek, those guys all deserve some love. It started with the run defense, DJ Jones, Eric Armstead moving inside, and it's uh, going to continue with the auxiliary pass rushers supporting Nick Bosa. There's a comment here. The Bengals' offensive line gives up some of the most, if not the most, sacks in the league, which is true. The 49ers have played some teams who have let up some sacks, but they were playing teams who let up sacks earlier in the season, and they weren't getting sacks. Now they're getting sacks against teams that have let up sacks. And that's why I'm talking about this Rams game as a definitive challenge for the 49ers, because this offensive line is good. These guys can block in front of Matthew Stafford. So now the 49ers have to take success against teams that have given up sacks and they have to apply it and take that success and apply it against teams who really haven't given up sacks. So yes, absolutely right. The 49ers can't control the schedule, but they have the Rams now and the pass rush has to continue doing what I just broke down. All right, subscribe, check out that article, subscribe to The Athletic too. double subscription. Maybe I'll buy you a sandwich or something or a beer. Anyway, you guys take care. Enjoy the rest of the week. I'll be back with some more videos and articles soon.